Hello, this is One Mana Left, and today it's time for the long-awaited video on the new Archmage change and one of the all-around best mana starters, Mjolnir. Uh, so to get right into it, we had these patch notes last week, and Archmage changed significantly. So Archmage was a gem that was very beloved and very well played back in its old state. It received a series of nerfs along the years, and it really fell out of popularity. No one really plays it in the traditional sense, where you just, you know, go mine over matter, stack life and mana, and get a lot more mana, and then do Archmage damage things, right? Well, after everyone kind of stopped playing it that way, um, along came someone that kind of did a broken combination with it with reverse snapshotting. And even though the gem has worked exactly this way for years, uh, it seems like three times G came in and said that it can't work that way anymore because doing billions of damage is unfair. So no fun allowed. Uh, we get a new Archmage gem now that no longer bases it off the cost of the skill. So that does destroy reverse snapshotting. However, it opens up some different combinations. So now Archmage, instead of being based on the cost of your skill, just gives you a flat amount of lightning damage based on your unreserved mana. So it doesn't matter if you reduce the skill cost to zero. It doesn't matter if the skill costs your entire mana. It now just gains flat lightning damage equal to, at level 20, 19% of your unreserved mana pool. Um, this is around on par, but probably about 30% stronger than how it was for traditional Archmage in 323 and prior patches. The cost change is minuscule for an actual mana stacker, but it is ever so slightly more expensive now, whereas before it, it gained a base mana cost equal to 5% of your maximum mana. Now it's the cost of the skill plus 5% maximum mana. Truthfully, for a mana stacker, that's not that different, but it's a little bit more expensive now. But for a normal gem, you were probably spending around 13 to 15% of your mana in a good scenario. Whereas now, you're probably still spending the same, but you're not as motivated to go aggressive on spend. So you're probably backing off to like 10 or 13% on spend. But whereas before, that would have given you a flat equal to about. 12 or 11 percent of your mana now it's 19 percent. so actually it's probably about 50 percent better well this does bring a combination of another very beloved item mjolnir so previously mjolnir would not have worked with archmage the reason for this is because mjolnir Aside from what everyone knows it for of triggering lightning skills it does not spend the cost socketed lightning spells have no cost if triggered so previously this would not have worked together but now it doesn't matter what you spend it just gains the flat damage which opens up the possibility of mjolnir archmage now mjolnir mana bond has been a very solid league starter for mana stacking builds for many leagues now and this brings some new combinations that are around as strong maybe even slightly stronger the nice thing here is, though, these new gem combinations do not require you to do the goofy mana bond loop where you have to dip low on mana and then, uh, you know, recoup back to full. You don't have to do that. You still have to spend mana for Indigon, but you're not bound to the mana bond gem. You can use a wide variety of spell gems, which is good because maybe you have a setup for clear speed and maybe you have a setup for single target. There's a lot of combinations. Um... And damage-wise, they're about as good and in some cases slightly better than the mana bond setup. So let's let's look at let's look at a comparison here. So I have I league started uh mana bond Mjolnir again last league. I've done it for like three or four leagues now. And uh This is my gear on day three. I think this is truthfully like the two and a half day mark. This always snapshots at a, like well before the 24 hour mark. But this is my gear. Uh, I imported this into POB, and this is what it looks like. So don't pay attention to the other gems I added here. We'll get to that. 
But the setup has, if I set the configuration to standard boss, set my spend equal to my mana pool, and then a 30% shock, nothing else. This is 5.5 million DPS. Um, if you go into the calcs, however, the added damage you get from this is adding like 7k damage. That's because it's assuming you are at zero mana. Now, it's really hard to be at zero mana and then miraculously gain back to a full mana pool to Arcane Cloak again. That's like the theoretical perfection uh, that really doesn't happen in reality. A good playstyle loop for mana bond is probably about 70% efficient, meaning you're on average at 30% mana, missing 70%, and then getting back to full. So I would say, truthfully, the damage of this setup is about 3.8 million, which is fair. I think that's about right. When I'm doing Guardians on this setup, it's about 10 second Guardians with no mods. And with tank mods, it might be 20 or 30 seconds. So this sounds right. And this setup is about ready for normal bosses. In a couple more days, it was starting to get ready for Ubers with about 10 million DPS. But I'm going to use this as a benchmark to compare what some of these other skills look like compared to the traditional mana bond. So I tested a bunch of gems. Mana bond itself. I tested Spark, Cracklance Disintegration, Arc, Wave of Conviction, Ball Lightning of Orbiting, you know, I, I tested pretty much the regular Lightning Con. I tested basically every combination that sounded like it could be good. I did two tests, basically. The, the feel test, like, does it feel good to play? Does it feel smooth? Is the coverage good? Is the clear good? Is it clunky? The feel test is important. And then just the straight damage test. You look at the, you look at the damage effectiveness of the gem... And basically do math on what this skill could do for DPS. And as a combination of damage and feel, I kind of gave him a, a five-star rating all. And I ended up settling on um, three winners. So it was Ball Lightning, Lightning Conduit of the Heavens, and Storm Call. I'm going to include Absolution paired with Storm Call because it's the same gem. Except Absolution does like 10% less damage, but has no need for the less duration. To, or it's instant, excuse me. Um, these gems do about as well numerically as Mana Bond. The difference is they don't have to do the Mana Loop where they deliberately try to stay low mana and then bounce back to full. Which, if you have like Coruscating Flask issues is what leads to your death sometimes. These setups do not require you to do that. You do want to still spend for the purpose of Indigon stacks. So you still want to have a cast one channeling loop, but you don't want to be as aggressive now. Maybe you go a little bit lower gem level um, or lower on the Indigon, like a 50 instead of maybe you were 55 before. But let's first look at some of the numbers on these. Then I'm going to show you some play style of them. Then finally, what a lot of you guys might want is I'm going to go over what, what my league start plan is for this character. Um, I did plan originally on League starting as Jug, but with the Archmage changes and announcements, I think I'm going to League start Hyro and then switch Jug later after I, you know, make a lot of currency. But the I'll go over at the end of the video what my plan is for the early game before I get a Mjolnir and all that stuff. I have a what I think is a pretty good setup for, like, stupid undergear, but a powerful setup for transitioning into mana stack in like you know white maps all the way up to like that day three profile so all right let's start with some numbers so numbers are good 3.8 mils the benchmark if you do mjolnir and you pay attention and you play right and you do the mana loop and you check all the boxes you got a character that does about 3.8 million dps well of those three i said that are probably the winners lightning conduit of the heavens is probably the one i'm going to go with Let's look at this for comparison. So I'm going to take off Mana Bond and Arcane Surge. I'm going to add Archmage. Oh, look, we're back to 3.8 million. So Lightning Conduit of the Heavens is different than Lightning Conduit. Um, it simply is a normal spell with 270 effectiveness. It has an enormous radius that's almost like full screen. It's 5.6 meters, 
without me really going hard into any scaling. So, like, look at the circle compared to that Ranger. The only thing about it, it doesn't require shock. It, the only thing about it is it requires you... It has a target limit of 16 enemies. But unless you're doing the most juiced, like, beyond content ever, this doesn't really matter. You almost never hit 16 or more enemies. Uh, especially if you get good damage, you're just mowing stuff down is the second you get to it. So... Lightning Conduit of the Heavens is what I'm probably going to pick as the winner. Um, it does a it, So, for comparison, same damage as Mana Bond, but doesn't require you to do the Mana Bond loop. You can just go. You, you don't have to worry about your micromanaging, your uh, foreboding flask timing. You don't have to dip low and put yourself at risk to die into chaos if Core Skating runs out or a flask siphon. Like... It's so much less restrictive for, like, the same results. The second setup is Ball Lightning. It's going to go Ball Lightning, Slower Proj, Arc Mage. And this setup is the highest damage with the asterisk there. There is a higher damage setup, but that's the fun one at the end. Uh, this is the highest damage setup at 4.8. You can get this higher depending on your proj speed scaling and your AoE scaling. Uh, Ball Lightning gets really helped out by Sanctuary of Thought as Hierophant, because if you get to 5k in reserve mana, it's plus 100 AoE, which is, you know, obviously good for clear speed, but for Ball Lightning, that's directly more single target damage. The third setup I'm going to go over is Storm Call. This one is a little funny. The damage is a little bit lower than, uh, than Mana Bond and Heavens, about, like, 9% lower or whatever, but, like, the clear feels really nice on this. This has the option to go Awaken Spell Cascade and go super full screen with no target limit. Now, it is worth noting on this setup, you have to use less duration most likely. But for, for the sake of the damage calculation, the quality on Storm Call is essentially 15% more damage, which isn't being multiplied in. It doesn't work in POB. So since less duration is a 1.2 times more damage multiplier, effectively those two things are like equal to the lightning pen so it's it's about 10 percent lower damage than the others but it has good clear it feels and looks amazing and there's one little bonus with spell cascade overlap you can make this the highest damage setup but it kind of depends on your aoe so of these three setups i'm going to show you guys a little bit of play from them and just see what you feel okay I'm not. I have a super expensive character. Where th this is this is not looking at the damage. This is just looking at the feel, right? You saw the damage in POB. This is just what the gem feels like. So this okay. So like half these don't work. All right, close enough. All right, I'm gonna plug in some white canyons just to show, like mechanically, how the the clear looks on these different skill gem setups. So I'm, just for consistency, I'm not going to do like Delirium Mirrors. I'm just going to kind of show. So this skill basically just zaps the whole screen with lightning. like, And it's got almost a full screen radius. So th like I said, this is the one I'm probably going to go with as the winner. Um, it has a greater range that it can reach targets at than Mana Bond does. So as long as you don't hit the target limit... And even if you do, just, you know, get more damage, lol. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a good setup. So I'll do I'll do one down back uh, of a canyon with all three of these setups and kind of just talk about the pros and cons of them. So like I said, especially with good gear, with this setup, very, very good clear and very few restrictions, very few stats to worry about. It's just generically good. The second one up, is going to be Ball Lightning. Um, just, okay. I'm going to throw in like a GMP here and a slower proj. Because, like I said, I'm really only worried about like showing off how they, how they look. Because, like I said, I can't simulate the damage numbers right now on this character. I have 32k energy shield and 18k mana. So I'm just spinning around, not pressing cloak really, and just, just kind of showing how the clear looks like it would feel, you know? The ball lightning potentially has the highest damage. With one exception, assuming you can do something really stupid. Um, but yeah, it's... It has the benefit of, if you get the balls pointed ahead of you, 
you kind of build up a kind of a river of them in front of you. And so going into the next pack, you can have your previous pack's ball lightnings moving forward. And just, you know, really aid in the damage. Um, it's a little slow with slower proj. Like, you can go for some more proj speed, but then you have the downside of, like, you lose single target damage. Uh, so it's, it's a little wonky of a setup, but it, the numbers are very good, and, and the feel is, is okay. Uh, and it has some different scaling directions. So that's, like, a negative if you don't like to micromanage things. But it's a positive if you, if you want to try to, like, squeeze out more numbers by, like, having different scaling directions. So this one can scale damage off radius and prod speed. Uh, the last one I'm going to show is by far the most fun. It's not even close. This one just kind of looks and feels funny in a good way. Um, but, like, this is Stormcall. If you have any, like caster fantasy in an arpg storm call is just up there for just looks amazing feels amazing and with cascade overlap it could be potentially like top damage so this is quite the skill oh we're gonna get even more radius here all right it can pretty much full screen aoe which just like i said looks and feels amazing if I really wanted to turn the speed up, I could get more radius scaling here because I can take the unnatural instinct uh, for 40 AOE. I can take the um, I can take uh, the extra ascendancy point for another 30. I went I went through and figured out all the ways I can get AOE, and I can get some I can get like 50% more radius than this, which is interesting from a damage standpoint if you can get to a certain threshold, and I'll show you in a, the math on that in a second. So, of what I tested, in my opinion, the Storm Call or potentially Absolution, it's kind of the same thing, just with less damage, but uh, no duration. It, it feels the best for clear with Cascade. But there's something interesting you can do there. So, the damage on that POB I showed was based off of no Cascade, one Storm Call. Here's a diagram, alright? This was 270 AoE. So, 100 base plus 170 so you get like 55 from the gem and you get 100 from sanctuary of thought so this was 270 when i tested uh, i drew on here with my amazing uh snipping tool skills what 370 looked like people have a misconception that um cascade stays equally spread no matter what your radius is that's not true the more radius you get the more overlap you get um this is what 370 looks like in the blue. It just barely is inside my feet. It doesn't quite overlap to a single point, but it's almost there. Probably even the small humanoid hitbox, it, it full shotguns. So with a uh, trigger like Mjolnir, it always casts directly on the target. So there's no like, you know, finding. It, it, it always is at the center hitbox of the target. Um, so if you can get to above like 370, which is like plus 270, which means you have to check a lot of boxes. You got to get like the unnatural instinct spot, maybe the higher offense point for 30%, maybe some of the tree points, um, like the awaken increased AOE gem, you know, this league we had charms for AOE per charge, whatever. But if you can get to this threshold, it pretty much takes your single target and it does five hits instead of one. So like... If I just took this and I just did, like, Awakened Spell Cascade instead, if POB doesn't uh, completely lag out here because every time I do this, it freezes for 10 seconds. All right, if I just do Awakened Spell Cascade here, holy cow. POB is dying. It is, it is dying. It does this every time I swap a gem. And I just, let's say, take out Lightning Pen instead. But then I do five hits. Now it's almost 10 million. Like two and a half times the, the heavens and mana bond amount. So if you can get to that like crazy uh, radius, it becomes both the best clear and the best single target gem. So if I were if I were to play, if I had no plans of going mana forge later and was going to play this the whole league, I would maybe screw around and try to get this threshold. Um... Rudy showed me a character on standard that had 510 AOE with a level 31 storm call. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Um, the storm call was like this. 
okay? I know you're thinking, you might be confused. What I mean is this one over here was here. It was like meter and a half overlap in all directions. So yeah, if you get to crazy AOE, you can do five hits single target with like all these three overlap hits and then single hits completely off screen, like one and a half screens away. Uh, so there's some scaling potential for storm call on top of just being a fun clear build that's like medium damage otherwise. Last thing I'm gonna go over is my plan for leveling, uh, how to get to one of the point to the point where you can play one of these like four combos. So the plan is with the changes to Archmage, you have um, you no longer need to spend a certain amount of mana to get the flat lightning damage. Like five seconds here. It's now just nineteen percent. So. This is a pretty known, I guess, interaction, but it's really, really abusable for this. As Blade Vortex Unleash Archmage. Um, my plan to level with this is... It doesn't really matter what you do through the axe. You can start doing this setup maybe like level 60-ish. Um, so it doesn't matter if you do Armageddon Brand, Rolling Magma, Fireball, whatever. What spark whatever you are comfortable with starting as a templar and grabbing a spell they're pretty similar i mean i'm not gonna nitpick and tell you to like take this talent point at level 46 and then three link faster no i don't do whatever you want get kitava down pretty much all templar starts within like a half hour of each other it doesn't matter but this is what i want to do for the actual hard part of the game which is white maps getting a build together with minimal gear making money and making your character powerful enough to push into red maps and atlas completion and start killing guardians which you could then buy those items to make a, ma a more powerful character with some of those early uniques that are going to be expensive like mjolnir and indigon so the interaction is blade vortex unleash archmage now, Blade Vortex is not a very good leveling skill uh, for one main reason. It has a really small radius. But the nice thing is Sanctuary of Thought, if you can get to 5k mana, which you should be able to by, like, white maps. It's like, I, this is a dumpster character. I'll show you again in a second. with 7,400. And by 5k, you can get a 100% increased area of effect, which is enough to coincidentally make BV feel like a real skill again because 2.5 meters is not bad. That's like, a, that's like a righteous fire radius at 2.5 meters. Um, but the, the reason this is really good is because a lot of these early Archmage setups are going to struggle with mana sustain still. So the, the, the Archmage being 5% base mana means it's still going to get multiplied by gem multipliers. So whatever that 5% base is, it's going to get helped by Sanctuary of Thought because it's going to be, um, two and a half percent base essentially after that. But then by the time you factor in like the flat gem cost and oh, this is gonna, I should have D&D, this is going to bug me. By the time you get to the flat gem cost, the 2.5%, all that fun stuff, you're going to get to a point where you're spending like 9% mana per cast, even on like a 5 link. So a lot of these early Archmage setups are going to really struggle on mana sustain. Because if you're sitting there casting a spell like 3 times per second for 9% of your mana, even with Sanctuary of Thought, you're going to have to sustain that with over a quarter of your mana per second. That's not really doable. Like Cloak of Defiance helps, but like it's not enough. You just can't sustain that. Nice thing about Blade Vortex is you don't need to. Like, Blade Vortex isn't a great endgame skill because it doesn't scale with cast speed, so you can't, like, juice up your cast speed and make it do crazy damage that way. But the baseline damage of the skill without any cast speed is just really good. So on a dumpster gear character, you can still do really good damage with just 10 stacks of BV and no cast speed scaling. Unleash doesn't care about cast speed scaling. You just take no cast speed. That's awesome. And, uh... There's a couple other dirty interactions here that help it. So instead of spamming a skill for 9%, you're only having to do BV Unleash every 3 seconds. So you have to spend 9% mana every 3 seconds. That's so sustainable. That's 3% mana per second as opposed to other builds spending like 30% per second to do full damage. But here's the, here's the dirtiest part of the interaction. If I go to this Blade Vortex, you'll see the Unleash gem... Supported skills deal 41% less damage when recurring. You guys might not know this, but this doesn't apply to Blade Vortex at all. 
because the first cast it doesn't get the damage penalty, and then all the other stacks are just giving stacks to that cast. Which so it since the first cast doesn't have the forty one penalty, all the subsequent casts that give you more stacks are just giving more stacks to the first cast, and there is no damage penalty. So see this damage here? What happens when I untick unleash? Nothing. All this gem is doing is making it cast in this case five times. Because I'm going to take the Staff Mastery here. You can take a different Caster Mastery if you have different weapons set up. But I'm taking a Staff with the Staff Mastery here for plus one seal. It gains a seal every 0.7 seconds. So after 2.8 seconds, you get four seals. You cast once and you gain five BV stacks. It's four second baseline. I'm going to take the Duration Points here because this is effectively a skill gem. And four points for a skill gem is really good value. Like a skill gem is worth 40% damage. So you would obviously take four skill points for 40% damage. So this makes the duration six and a half seconds, which is perfect because you get five stacks every three seconds. Cast BV, five stacks. Three seconds later, cast BV, five stacks. And then in between, I'm just phase running. I got frost blink. I got cast some damage taken. I'm just going to have a little bit of duration scaling because I have the duration on the tree plus the duration link here. And I'm just going to phase run in between. So I'm just going to play phase run running simulator. Three seconds go by, five stacks, phase run. Five stacks, phase run. It's real mindless running simulator. Um, but the damage is pretty dang nice because you're getting like 1,600 flat lightning damage from your mana pool. Um, you're not getting the unleash penalty. And let me tell you, a 2.5 meter radius of 1.2 million DPS for early gear is really good. That will feel pretty comfortable in red map still and this is a level 79 character with pretty dumpster gear so i did just to do a little bit of gear breakdown i did pick a six link which is not like a level 79 character should have a six link however the choice is pretty much pick like a unique armor for a five link but if you if you do the math on an early league setup to five link to actually socket it in five link it costs like 30 chaos so i figured why not just buy a dumpster six link for like 30 chaos and use that instead so that's what i did so this is a dumpster six link i just threw on a loricated ring mail um and then crafted it i don't know the stats don't matter this could have been a tabula rasa whatever i just figured i'd buy some dumpster six link and like th this is some poverty gear i mean this is this gear is bad like is 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 bad gear So th this is this gear's based off my 24 hour snapshot from last league, and then I made it worse. Look at that! I got 14 life on this belt. You might think, oh, it's a Stygian Pog. Yeah, it's a Stygian Alchemy Orb. Uh, I have one unique item on, and it's Agnarod West, which is two chaos on league start. So a two chaos Agnarod West that doesn't matter if it's linked because I bought a dumpster six link chest. My config, uh, I'm doing the mana of two casts because it costs five eighty nine. So this gives me the full spend for uh, arcane capacitor, which is what I should have. Uh, I have it on standard boss. I don't have any charges, onslaught, focus, whatever. I did a twenty five shock because I'm pure lightning damage, and you, you will get shocks. You probably get more than 25 shocks, but I just picked 25. You're a lightning skill. So yeah, standard boss, 1.2 mil DPS, dumpster gear, level 79. Mainly on the back of abusing Unleash Archmage Blade Vortex. And then having uh, Sanctuary of Thought smooth out the damage. I'll probably play something like this until I can afford a Mjolnir. And then as soon as I can get a Mjolnir, I'll switch to Mjolnir Lightning Condor of the Heavens. And then use that to farm for an Indigon. That's the Hierophant start plan. I'll include both these trees with the, like, Dumpster 79 starter and then, like, the level 92 Mjolnir Indigon setup. I'll include those in the POB. Uh, ultimately, there is a lot of flexibility here because you're not stuck on something like Mana Bond only. You have a lot of skill gem combos you can use with this. Um, I might do more testing on different skill gem combos, but this is just of the testing I did. These are the four that were the best. I would pick the one that... Because they're all so similar in performance, I would pick the one that you just enjoy the most. It's not like one's head and shoulders above the others, and you have to play that one. But, yeah, 
This is kind of the gateway drug. This is the entry to mana stackers, and it's probably better than ever as a start. So hopefully I see you guys doing some mana stacking in 324. I would say it just keeps getting better over time. And uh, hopefully you guys have a good legion.